All right, YouTube, we are live. YouTube, TikTok, live and shipping. Jake's reselling. What's going on? Clean off my camera here one sec. It's a little better. Probably should have done that before. How you doing, Jake? What's going on, Matt? Jake, I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? I know, right? Pack the mortars is right. I actually was gonna do this before and I forgot, like always. Virginia, hello. How's it going? Thanks for jumping into the live, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get a batch of orders pulled up. I've got 23 items. Let's do this Facebook order first. Packaged your nine sales. All right. Nice. Matt, how was your weekend? All right. So I sold one item on Facebook for those that are watching uh, already. I'll go ahead and grab it real quick. Actually, a really sweet piece. This Ralph Lauren, like Polo Ralph Lauren, you can see a uh, really co colorful plaid shirt. It's got this really cool pattern all around. The collectibles, what's going on? Matt says he had 10 sales, 7 eBay, 3 Facebook. So I had 22 sales on eBay and one on Facebook. So 23 total. And then I had one roll on this morning, but I won't be shipping it out um, until tomorrow. So yeah, great sale here on this shirt. I got $35.50. That's including shipping. So $30 plus shipping on Facebook. And um, let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. I've been trying out different things on Facebook. So posting, I posted probably 20 different, like Ralph Lauren's, Al Beans, uh, Brooks Brothers on Facebook to see if they're getting any traction. You can see, obviously, because this one is unique, it's a different color. Like you're not going to see this very often. Um, it did get a lot of views and eventually sold, but most of the dress shirts that I'm that I uh, am like listed on Facebook just aren't getting the views. Like the blues, the solid colors, they're just not getting views. Um, <clears throat> See, saw lots more sales coming on Facebook. Been a quick, quicker turnaround. Yeah, it has been. It, it can be more profitable and quicker. Um, if you know what to list. So just to give you an idea on that, um, the one that I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and ship out this Facebook first, just because I have the one and then I can be done with that. That one went for $35.50. And uh, so $5.50 for shipping and then $1.90 for my Facebook fees. Um, and I paid around 450 for the shirt. So I, I profited a total of $23.52 on one shirt, 23 bucks for something like this. So um, I'll show you one more time before I package it up. Polo Ralph Lauren Regent. You can see kind of like right there on the tag, it says Regent. I'm going to slide TikTok over a little bit. Tawny, how's it going? Thanks for... Uh, Thanks for jumping in. I'm doing well. Yeah, those of you that may have been wondering where I was last week, I, I I guess I didn't have a way of mentioning it. I guess I could have done on TikTok, but we had a funeral to go to. So my sister and I went to a funeral for uh, kind of um, not someone that I was close to, but I just I went to be there for family. Um, so I wasn't around last week. I didn't do this live like I normally do, but here I am again right now. So glad to be back. First time in two weeks live on, on YouTube, besides two flipping dudes. All right, so I'm going to package this up and get it going. Wish I could just like do this and it would be done. But those that are jumping in, because we do have quite a bit of people watching now, how are sales for you this weekend? Um, do you have some great sales? eBay, Facebook, Poshmark, let me know. 
Um, what what platforms are selling for you? What that looks like? Okay. I haven't had this before, but Facebook is saying confirm your information. And then when I do, it says something went wrong. Okay, let's try this again. Information is correct. So it's not going to let me ship out. Let's, let's refresh the page. Duck Collectibles says he's stayed away from Facebook Marketplace. You got to give it a shot if you, um, well, I don't say you have to, but it, it's definitely proven to be something that has been great for me. I, I wouldn't say I'm getting like tons of sales, but uh, like last month I did probably profit wise, I made about $700. This month I'm already sitting at about 380 to 400, somewhere in there. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, it looks like I'm going to beat my previous month. <clears throat> but yeah, some people posting on here and I agree with Facebook can be faster sales and more margin. Scammers galore. Um, yeah, I haven't really come across scammers yet on Facebook, but what are you all seeing? Like what types of um, scams on Facebook marketplace? To my knowledge, like no one's tried to scam me yet um, that I that I can tell. Usually I'm pretty good at picking that stuff out when someone's trying to scam me. All right, we're going to try and do this again and see if it will let me. Okay, it's not going to let me create this label. So we're going to skip it for now and move on to eBay. <clears throat> I had probably um, $200 in sales on Friday on eBay. I had probably $300 on, on Saturday. And then yesterday, I probably did $250 for a total of, what is that, $750 for the weekend? Which isn't bad. That's kind of a smaller weekend. But um, <clears throat> it's kind of been like that lately. Seesaw says, just started Facebook this past week and had about 10 quick sales. No issues if someone asks. And just so you know, I'm obviously on TikTok and YouTube. So if you see a comment I'm reading that you're not seeing, it's probably on the other platform. Um, if someone asks to sell outside Marketplace, I say no. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I have had one person reach out. They bought a pair of boots off of me. Those boots have already delivered, but um, they were like, can I Venmo or PayPal you? I did that. Um, I, they Venmoed me or PayPal or one or the other. I don't know. Um, I sent the boots and I haven't had any issues. So um, uh, yeah, they were $100 Harley Davidson boots. So I'm hoping those are okay. Um, but like I said, they've already delivered. So I'm not sure what this guy can do. Actually, I don't think I did PayPal because they can dispute payment. I think I did Venmo for that reason. I said I would accept Venmo. Um, so he even mowed the money and I sent him off. See you later to collectibles. Thanks for jumping in. People doing the old switcheroo on eBay. Yeah, I've never had that happen actually, except I had a pair of, well, I have had that once, but in, in gosh, what? Thousands of sales on eBay. I've never really had anyone switcheroo on me, but um, they they try that on more newer resellers um, that have smaller feedback. <clears throat> so if you have less feedback, if you're a newer res newer reseller, scam scammers will try and do stuff more with you than they would for someone who has like me, almost five thousand feedback. Um, <clears throat> even though I do get it occasionally, so I just need to check here and see if I have duplicate states.
see I see an order going to um, Snowmass Village, Colorado. Not far from where I used to be. All right, so as far as basically what I'm doing is I'm looking to see those states that are duplicates. And out of 10 orders that I'm doing in this batch, I only have two packages going to Florida. Um, so everything else is just, there's not a duplicate state for that. So I'll make sure to put the zip code on those packages going to Florida so I don't get those two mixed up. Uh, great question, Dirty Money D. I, I don't know. Um, as far as Venmo and PayPal, I know that people can call in and dispute payment with PayPal. So that's why I didn't take it on those motorcycle boots. Um, with Venmo, I'm not sure. I, I just haven't had enough transactions. Like most of the Venmo transactions I've done have been local sales where you go, you meet up, and then just they send you the money. I've never had any issues with that. But as far as sending something, um, yeah, I haven't had any issues so far. So fingers crossed that that doesn't happen on these boots. I had scammers try me like five minutes after I activated my account. Well, that's a bummer. Uh, when they pay on Venmo, I go through Pirate Ship because you can't really do anything on Facebook. If you take it away from Facebook, there's no way to pay because Facebook hasn't registered a sale. So go to Pirate Ship. You can buy a label. It's really cheap. It's it's like the same rates as you would get printing through eBay for the most part. So that's where I go. That's how I print the label. Like I said, I've only done it one time. Everything else people have bought through Facebook or they've bought through eBay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a few of these orders. We got this BKE shirt. Went for 24 bucks. It's about standard on a BKE shirt. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Just put it in the live or in the chat. Just are hanging out to say hello or just watch as you list. That's cool too. I haven't had a lot of luck with these pants and I don't really pick them up anymore, even though I've seen them lately. These Hagar golf pants are like a performance polyester. Um, I actually have some that are really old in my store that have just been sitting. I just relisted them today to try and get them to move. But these I recently picked up and they're size 54. So they're a larger size and someone actually paid uh, twenty eighty four plus shipping. So twenty eight eighty four for these pants. I kind of was shocked when they went for that. And they're over a pound. All right, got a vintage piece next. The vintage Eddie Bauer has just not been as lucky for me. And this is a really old tag. See if you can see that in there. Oh, the tag is kind of blocking it. There we go. It's a really old Eddie Bauer tag right there. This is a denim shirt, short sleeve. Problem is it's a men's medium, so I didn't get as much, but it did go for $24. And just like I always do, you guys, I'm telling you the amount that it went for, including shipping. I guess I could start saying the amount that it went before shipping because shipping doesn't really matter. It's already paid by the buyer. Those of you watching, if you'll like this video for me, hit the thumbs up. Give me a give me a simple tap of the thumbs up on YouTube. Sold this Tommy Bahama shirt, brand new with tags. Um, I honestly went to a garage sale a couple of years ago, picked these up. The guy was like, uh, 
some kind of wholesaler dealer something for some of these name brands like Tommy Bahama, some golf stuff as well. And I picked up like 18 bucks a piece for these. And I was thinking that I could get 35 to 50 bucks and most of them sold off. I have a couple of these that have just been sitting. So this is an older style shirt, obviously new with tags. And I finally just took an offer to get it moving. Uh, no, actually I said I took an offer. I thought I did. This sold for 3109 all in, which again, I probably made three to $4 when you subtract out what I paid. Um, shipping and fees and stuff, but finally glad to get my money back on that guy. What I've noticed with those Tommy Bahamas is they just, unless it's like a really bright color Hawaiian shirt, they just don't get that much money anymore. I mean, that one, I've got a couple other shirts that are like more of like the dress shirt, dress casual sitting in my store, new with tags that people just aren't purchasing. So you really need the bright colors and the Hawaiian for it to sell faster. What I've noticed in my store, weirdest thing I've ever sold. Uh, man, it's hard with clothing just because you don't get a lot of weird things, or at least I don't find that. Let's see. Weirdest thing I've ever sold. Um, I have to think about that for a second. I'll, I'll kick that back to you all. What's the weirdest thing you've ever sold? Maybe that will help jot my memory on what I've sold. Yeah. Sea salt says pattern is a huge deal. It really is. And stuff like that used to sell two, three, four years ago on eBay for really good money. And not anymore. Um, I've noticed those, those shirts I, I've had several that have just sat and don't go for that much money. That was like a large, it wasn't a great size, but Anyways, all right, <clears throat> got a pair of 511 um, like work utility pants uh, that went for 28 bucks with shipping. Yeah, Tommy of Bahama is oversaturated. It is. I agree with you, uh, Tawny. I think Rally Roots used to talk about it, and they still do, I guess, but used to talk about it quite a bit, which is obviously how I found it. I guess it's not so obvious, but I used to watch a lot of Rally Roots, and that's how I found out about that brand. And so I imagine, you know, they have 100,000 subscribers with that many people watching their channel. There's that many people looking for Tommy Bahama. Here's a brand straight down. It's like a golf brand and uh, straight down is a good brand, but this was more important about the logo on the front there. And you can't really tell, but Pebble Beach, it's got the Pebble Beach, which is a great, really well-known U.S. course that a lot of professional golfers play at every year. So um, I bought this shirt mainly for this um, course embroidery thing here. And so this went for 20, pretty much 30 bucks with shipping. And I paid $4 for it. Funny thing about this is it even had like some marks on the sleeve of the shirt, like some light uh, marks and then at the bottom as well. And even with those marks, I mean, I took pictures, talked about them in the description. It's still sold for full price, which kind of blows my mind. But I think that's um, for someone who may be tucking this shirt in, it wouldn't be seen because those marks were on the bottom. So if you tuck the shirt in, obviously it's gonna be hidden. And usually it's going to California, same state where the course is. Usually if I have like a flawed item, a clothing item that um, has marks on the bottom of the shirt, I will say that. I will say, if you tuck it in, it's probably not gonna be seen, which will help people. I mean, you wanna help sell the item, right? So that's why I say that. 
Uh, Jake, that's a great question. Jake asks on TikTok if I usually pick up the Pebble Beach branded polos. Uh, he says, I see them often. Comps don't seem great. They're not. Pebble Beach, the brand Pebble Beach is not a great brand. It's like a Kohl's brand. I mean, if you go to Kohl's, you're probably paying 20 bucks for that shirt new, maybe 25. So I pass on the Pebble Beach stuff. What you really want is the Pebble Beach course logo. You don't want the Pebble Beach brand. So look for golf logos with Pebble Beach. Um, big difference. And I'm glad you asked that because um, it, it really does make a difference. Jill Stoller, thanks for following me. I appreciate that. Tawny says, I love Ryan and Alec. Yeah, they're really great. And I don't watch a lot of YouTubers anymore. But I still occasionally will pop into a video of theirs. And the reason why I don't watch is just because I don't have a lot of time. It's not like I um, have anything against other people reselling and YouTubing. But uh, Harry Tornado, um, Ben from Ready, Set, Resell, and Rally Roots are the three that I watch probably more than anyone else. This was a fast flip. I picked this up and a couple days later it sold. And mainly because of... The size right there. I don't know if you can see that. 3XL tall listed this last week and again sold this weekend. So um, I got $28 all in on this. Anytime you have like 3XL and up, you're going to get a higher price because, um, because there's not many shirts out there that are 3XL and tall added onto that. So what I'll say is, uh, you know, if I'd had this shirt, same pattern and an XL, I would have gotten like 22 to 25. And this went for 28 because of the size. Actually, really lightweight. I'd be surprised if it's more than eight ounces. And it's not, so that's good. Uh, who's Walter? Rusty says Walter is cool. I'm not familiar with that person. I'm guessing you're talking about another reseller who's on YouTube. Jake, funny you should mention that. I'm going to be talking about Southern Tide here in just a second. I have exactly what you just mentioned sold for me this weekend. So I'll show you. Jake asks about uh, Southern Tide is a great brand. It's got a little fish as a logo, usually on the chest. Um, and he mentioned, do I sell uh, Southern Tide Skipjack golf polos? The polos, I don't pick up as much um, compared to like button down shirts, but I do have a polo that's sold. And it's not in this batch, but it'll be in the next one. So I'll be showing you about that one in just a sec. Hey, Danny, what's going on? Danny jokingly says, I only have watch in stock, Jason. <laughs> Do I add anything to my uh, package, i.e. a card? I've got some, some of these, and I have in the past done it, but especially on Mondays when I've got so many um, orders, the process, I don't do it on Mondays, and I haven't done it in a while. But there for a while, I was um, slipping in a card just saying, like, thanks for your purchase, and then signing my name. So you can do that. It definitely helps. And you can get these um, eBay cards uh, from the eBay shipping supplies store. Um, but uh, yeah, I think something like that, you know, or just there, you know, at one point I had something I just created on like a, pay, uh, like a page or a Microsoft Word. I just created like a little document that had my logo and said, thanks for your purchase all typed up. And then it said, you know, we love, you know, I love positive feedback or something. If you have any issues, please let me know. And I would slip that in and that can help get more positive feedback, uh, especially just a little extra touch besides just the shirt. But for now, I don't really do anything. So Rusty asks, if I get a clothing item without size tags, do I still list it? Of course. Yeah. And if it's a good enough item, I'm not going to pass it up just because it doesn't have a tag. What you can do is do a sold comp search for that item. Say it's a Ralph Lauren button down and then just start comparing measurements. You know, by now I've done so many clothing that I know what the measurements are for like a two XL. You're going to be at like 26 and a half to 29 inches somewhere in there. And so if, if I get something like that, I'll usually just 
I'll do my guess, my, my best to guess. So I'll just, if I get something that's like 27 and a half inches pit to pit, I'll just list it as 2XL because I know that's that range. But you can also just look at other listings on eBay. People will put in their pit to pit measurement and you can use that to compare to see what yours is. Great question. <clears throat> Bring the rest of these over here. J. Crew sweater, really cool pattern. Uh, let's see, XL. Not sure why this sat for a while. It's got this like red and white striped pattern here. Just a basic, but new with tags. Went for thirty bucks all in. And it's going to a person named Blackhawk. It's interesting. I've never, uh, I've never seen that name on an order before. I got a pair of newest tags gap jeans. I bought four of these for 15 bucks a piece at Goodwill about a year and a half ago. No, over, yeah, to February 20th of 2020. So close to a year and a half ago. Um, three of them sold off. This was the last pair for me and I got a total of $33 all in. So not as much as I was hoping and not as much as the last ones went for. But when something's been sitting for a while, it's finally time when you have a, a buyer or an offer, it's finally time to just negotiate and move it out. I saw a couple of questions come in. How, uh, Tani on YouTube asks, how many hours a week on, uh, how many hours a week do I source? That's a great question. Let's see. Typically like one day a week, I will source and I'll spend that whole day out. So I'll be gone for seven to eight hours. Try and get there when the stores open at nine. I say seven or eight. That's not really accurate. I'll try and leave around like eight and then I'll get back around three to four, somewhere in there. So I guess it's not far off, but I'll usually do that once a week and I'll get a lot of stuff for um, the week. And then towards the end of the week, I may go out and hit one or two more stores around here. But usually on that one thrift day, I will get uh, 60 to 85 items. And that's enough for me to list for the week. If I, can, if I can average like 75 items a week, that's a good average. Listing 300 items a month, obviously. Um, and I'd say that's pretty accurate with what I've been doing lately. So... All right, let's see. The last item up, Vineyard Vines, brand that has slowed down for me. There's the tag, the whale logo on the chest. Um, I ended up getting $17 for this with shipping. And the reason why I took such a low offer on this, because it was a medium. Enough said there, mediums don't sell for that great of money. Going to Miami. All right, last one of the batch. These bad boys printed out. Any ask when is found, found nothing to me. Never have like a one or two items. Has it ever happened? I think my strategy is, you know, I'm a high volume clothing seller. And so I'm usually finding items here and there.
Um, yeah, Rusty asks, I, if someone could eBay pay all of your bills. Yeah, you can do it. Uh, country you're in, obviously, if, if it's going to be a higher cost of living, if you're like in a smaller town. I guess if you're in a smaller town, um, obviously there are advantages. If you're in a city, you have a lot more options to source. You probably have a lot more resellers too out there competing for those items. But your bills are going to be higher. You're going to pay more in rent or a house payment. Obviously, if you're in a small town, you may not have as many options to source, but your bills are going to be less. So yeah, it's doable for sure. Um, trying to think, could I do it right now? Fortunately, my wife um, works full time. I mean, we both work full time, but she has a decent salary. So, um, but if if I were on my own, could I live off of my income? Thinking for a second. Yeah, I think it's possible. I think it's possible, but you have to really work hard. You have to be willing to work hard and stay disciplined with it. It's it's not something that, uh, you know, I guess depending on where you live. <laughs> Can I have those pictures of your beanies? That's funny. I did a post recently on TikTok. Uh, someone was asking for pictures of all my beanie babies and I sent them to them and then they were like, can you send them all in one picture? I'm like, why? So I, I obviously didn't do that. What's your typical routine on updating your sheet and how often do you do that on sales? I, all the time. So I just entered in, you know, every time I make a sale, I update my sheet. Um, if that's what you mean, sorry if I'm misunderstanding you. Matt, have a great day. Thanks for uh, jumping in. eBay uh, for the last two weeks has been doing this weird thing when you go to print labels. It just it, it's like doesn't the labels take forever to pop up? It shows it loading, and then when it finally does load, you can't ever get them to print. So I have to like go through this backdoor method every time just to print off labels, whether it's two or twenty. It's kind of annoying. I don't know why it's doing that, and I don't know if it's like an Apple Mac thing or if it's an eBay thing. <clears throat> Yeah, good to know that someone else is having the issue. Um, because like I said, I don't know if, do you have a Mac? Uh, random things resellers, do you have a Mac as well? I'm curious if it is an Apple thing, because I, I have, I updated recently, and sometimes when you update your software with Mac uh, or with Apple, it, it kind of messes with things like this. Not a Mac, okay, so it must be an eBay thing. It must be an eBay glitch. Batch. 
I'm saving kind of the more difficult items to ship for last. Got a plate set, a Williams Sonoma plate set that went for like ninety dollars, eighty dollars, eighty bucks, I think. Uh, I got a couple blazers. So I'm gonna save those. How many sales did I get this weekend? Um, I got 22 on eBay and one on Facebook. Which Gavin, um, I just shipped out like 10 of them already. So I'm down to the last uh, 13. I did sell this. Lands in really sharp dress shirt, great color, great size, two uh, XL tall, for thirty one bucks. And that's again, that's more of a size thing and a color thing. I just heard the post office lady pull up, so I'll be dropping these off later on. She's probably happy that she's not getting my weekend haul. And this is going to Puerto Rico. I do ship to Puerto Rico. It usually ends up being a little more, but not much. How many listings do I have active on eBay? I've got 1430 something, 1430 something. Um, trying to build my way back up, so. For Raya Sunshine, good to see you. Um, I, I asked if I add sales tax to an item. I used to, but eBay does it for you now. So you shouldn't have to do that. eBay automatically collects sales tax, sales tax and pays on your behalf um, as a seller. So you don't have to do that. You shouldn't get in any trouble with the IRS um, because eBay is taking care of that for you, which I'm glad they are because if they weren't, that would be a major headache. <clears throat> So there's, there is a little button still where you can check to add sales tax and you can like custom, you can put in your custom amounts for sales tax per state based on what state you're in. Um, I don't leave, I don't check that and eBay will automatically figure that into the order. <clears throat> Sold the unusually high amount of Ralph Lauren's this weekend for 23 orders. I think I got five this weekend. So 25 to 30 percent of my sales were Ralph Lawrence. But here's another one, 2XL tall, went for 23 bucks. I just checked this morning to see how many Ralph Lauren shirts or Ralph Lauren items I have in my store. And I've got like almost 200. That's between like sweaters and shirts and pants. Interesting. I just saw the post lady go by and like literally when I told you and she just went back again. I wonder if she forgot something. It's like deja vu. Am I in the matrix? Wasn't a black cat though, so. <clears throat> Oh, um, when you buy a piece, if you get it for $9.99, when you consider the purchase price is $12.99. Yeah, I figure in, so I don't think I really pay sales tax here on items at, at thrift stores. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of them don't add sales tax, but what I do is I, I'll take a receipt and let's say I bought 10 items and here's the receipt for 48 bucks. I'll just divide 48 by 10 and I'll get an average of 480 per item and that's what I use to figure my cost of goods, if that's what you mean. Yeah, so yes, I do figure in sales tax when I'm calculating cost of goods per item. So I just do an average across the board. So thanks for clarifying that and hope, hopefully that answers. All right, uh, Jake, you were asking about the um, Southern Tide. Here's the Southern Tide and you can see the skipjack polo right there. 
obviously says skip jack on the tag on the tag this sold for full price probably because it is a men's xl it's a great color like pink and blue striped i got 27.79 all in but usually southern tide that's kind of high for southern tide and if you're getting just like the um solid polos those are more generic they don't go for as much Tawny, uh, primarily clothes, but I've been branching out lately. You can see I've got some plates back here. I do like kids' toys, like plushes. I've got, I, I look for electronics. I've got a stereo over here I'm selling. Um, home decor. So I'm branching out into quite a bit uh, besides clothing. And mainly because like when I was in Denver, I could do all the clothing I wanted and I could never find, I mean, I would always have enough. But here... I really kind of have to branch out. I mean, I can get, I could, I could live on clothing alone, but it would be, it wouldn't be as abundant here. And so, and I'm in Arkansas. And also if I'm going to three stores, you know, let's say at three or four stores in a day thrifting, I might as well, if I'm going to be in the store and I've already driven there, I might as well have all these other items in my back pocket I can look for. So yeah, I've been branching out a lot lately. I sell a lot of dishes and plates and things like that, like plate sets. Here's an LL Bean sweater, uh, women's medium, great pattern here. Like cable knit is a descriptor for this. I got $34, including shipping. Definitely going to be a padded flat rate. Sorry, I'm, I'm, you probably can't tell, but I'm being really careful because this morning. So last week, uh, I've got bins like, my bins are huge. They're 116 quart. And if I fill them with 50 like items, clothing uh, items, then they can get really heavy. And like the highest rack I have is like right up here. So I have to like pull it down or like lift it up obviously. And so it's not great on my back and I haven't been lifting well. And so last week my I did, I tweaked a muscle and I was like, all right, reminder, make sure you lift with your legs, not with your back. So, um, so it finally like pain went away. Today, I was feeling great. I came in today and bent over, not even picking something up. And I was like, ah, there is something there. So uh, it's just a reminder that I'm not 22 anymore and I need to take care of my back. I don't want to have, my parents have had back issues, so I don't want to be next. I have the exact same shirt, but orange stripes, nice. You talking about the skipjack? Yeah, and I do see those southern tides quite a bit, and I'm very selective, so it gives you an indication. Nike Golf, Nike Golf shorts. Got $23 all in on these. Just seeing how we're doing here. I've been trying to get these shipping lives down to like an hour, which is totally doable. I'm at 43 minutes, so shouldn't be an issue. An hour and a half to two hours for a live, I think it's just too long. Another Ralph Lauren. 30 bucks for this guy right here. Uh, just an XL, pretty good condition. Vegas Bubbo, what's going on? I haven't mentioned in a while. Um, I, I mentioned I have like 200 Ralph Lauren items. Sorry about the sneeze. And I should say that I'm very selective with Ralph Lauren, L.L. Bean, um, Brooks Brothers. I'm only getting larger sizes and I'm only getting shirts in great condition. They have to have the logo for the most part. So, um, 
I know I mentioned that I, I sold quite a bit of Ralph Lauren, but know that I'm I'm really picky. Uh, I think I made a mistake on one of these Ralph. Yeah, I did. So I have so many Ralph Laurens I'm shipping that I put the wrong one in the wrong bag. So now I need to go find it. So I realized when I was going to ship this one, that it's not the same one that I put on here. It's not the same one that I'm shipping. So I made a mistake. And so I'll just scratch through Missouri because it's not going to Missouri anymore. This one is going to South Carolina. Glad I caught that. Danny, if you're still watching, did you end up going to another store after I saw you on Friday or did you head home? All right, two more items from this batch. Got these Pearl Izumi. And this, guys, this is pretty standard for me. Men's or women's? Pearl Izumi cycling shorts. These are kind of like longer shorts. Um, 30 bucks. It's pretty standard for me. I This is just a great brand. There's the logo there for those that may be looking for it. Um, yeah, I just know when I get these, I know how much I'm going to get for it. And I wait. And I haven't had these long. I listed them on May 11th. And they sold this weekend for 30 bucks. So I um, don't need to weigh these. They're lightweight. <clears throat> and lastly is a master's polo. There's the tag. Yeah, you can see it. All right. There's the logo. Look for that guy right there. Masters is a golf tournament. These shirts consistently go for 25 to 35 bucks, depending on what type of shirt it is. And that one went for a best offer of 25 bucks. I need to weigh in. I mean, I know you probably just heard me say, I don't really need to weigh it. I'm thinking out loud here. Um, basically, eight ounces. So five to eight ounces is one price. Nine to 12 ounces is another price. And 13 to one pound is a third price. So, you know, if it, I know this shirt is going to be at 12 ounces or less. So if it's 10, it's the same price as 12. But if it's 13 ounces, then it's going to be more. That's not going to be more than 12 ounces. I kind of, I've gotten used to knowing how much things weigh just by feeling them. Um, it's got to be pretty light to be eight or less. I don't do free shipping. Um, I, I charge the buyer for shipping. I did free shipping for a very long time and just switched not too long ago, probably six months ago. Someone just knocked on the door. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's like it's the UPS man. All right, so I'm printing out this batch. And then I've got three other items I've got to ship out um, that are going to, they're not as not as easy to pack, but I'll, I'll do. Uh, what about measurements? Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by measurements? Of the package, or do you mean the measurements of an item? 
if you can clarify that, I'll answer your question for you. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give me a thumbs up. Like, like this live right now. Uh, cost. Sorry, I'm not following dog PTA one. So if you'll just clarify your question, sorry, I'm not getting it. I want to make sure I do answer the question that you're asking. So let me know and I'll, I'll do my best. Cost of shipping for measurements. Um, that's a great question because you're, I'm guessing you're responding to me saying that I, if it's between eight, 12 and 16 ounces, then it's a certain price. Typically with an item under a pound, measurements don't matter as far as dimensions, whether it's 13 inches long or five inches, it just really doesn't matter. So I don't put, even put dimensions in the order. Um, I just do the weight if it's first class. Now, if it is going to be like two, three, four pounds and up, and it's going to be a more irregular, like bigger package, obviously it's going to be important to put the measurements. So, um, I'll do that on these next three items that I'm shipping that aren't like clothing items under a pound. Those of you that are watching, what do you normally sell? Like what's your niche? If you have a niche, are you clothing? Are you hard goods? What do you sell? Just curious. Man, I get so many of these robo calls. It's frustrating. I wish there was something that you could do. I mean, I think I've done that block my number thing, but it's ridiculous how many times they come in. Wow, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of comments. Thanks for posting, guys. Clon care, video games, anything, but mostly books and clothes. Electronics do, yeah. Electronics do well. I just I'm picky with what I'm looking for, and you, I mean, you've got to test it, make sure it works, and it takes a lot of storage space. But if you know the right stuff, you can definitely make some really good money on electronics. Vicious flavors, no look, no luck with clothes. Clothing is hard. It's not for everyone. Um, it's a longer, longer tail item, meaning meaning it's going to sit. I was just looking over my numbers today. I'm averaging in this year five months that an item is sitting. Five months. So if you're not willing to wait that long, I wouldn't suggest getting into clothing. Now I, I'm not also going to say that you know some of my items sit a little longer because I price higher. And there are items out there you can definitely. Um, list that sell faster. I've been getting a lot of fast sales. So I have some older inventory that's bringing that number up, but I would say three to four months is probably average. Do I measure my items prior to posting the item? Uh, let me answer this first part. When you list your items, do you just go with whatever e eBay estimates or do you measure your items prior to posting the item? Great question. Um, I do a flat fee. 
So if it's a men's button down shirt, that's going to be first class. I do five bucks. And obviously sometimes it's going to be 450. Sometimes it's going to be 550. Five bucks is my standard rate. So I don't measure, um, if it's an item that's like a pound or, or more, and it's like clothing, like a pair of jeans or a sweater or something like that, that fits in those envelopes. I do eight bucks. So I kind of just, sorry, that's loud. Kind of just go with that method methodology. Um, but I've basically just, because I've been doing this for a while, I've kind of gotten used to what things cost and I've gotten an idea of how to charge. If you're new, I, I always suggest just do calculated shipping, put in the dimensions, put in the weight, and then it will charge the buyer an accurate rate. So that's what I would suggest until you like learn how much things cost. <clears throat> You're welcome, ML Brock. Thanks for posting your question in here. Um, yeah, Bruce, why don't small people buy clothes on eBay? Only seems to be larger sizes. Well, they do. And I just this morning sold a like a Blackhawk uh, shirt, men's small, but it's been sitting in my inventory for two plus years. So um, I think just because if you if you think about the person that's buying on eBay, generally speaking, the demographic is it's an older population. You're looking at like 40, 40 year olds and up, you know, not a lot of 15, 20 year olds are going on eBay to make, to make a purchase. So this is just my speculation, but most people who are 40 and up are not a size small. Just as we get older, we tend to gain a little weight. Um, and so that's why small and medium are so hard to find buyers for, um, in specifically men's. And I don't, I don't sell a lot of women, so I'm really just talking about men's. But um, that's that's my speculation on why it's hard to find um, buyers for men's small. I wish it weren't the case, but unfortunately, things happen when you get older, you know. All right, let's start with this guy. Eddie Bauer, Travex, Blazer. Here's the tag. Whenever you're buying Eddie Bauer, that yellow little diamond thing is Travex or Travix. And it definitely ups the value of the brand Eddie Bauer. I don't pick up a lot of Eddie Bauer, but I did get this jacket. Um, I sold it for $39.89 with shipping. This is pretty lightweight. So for something like this, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the scale and weigh it first and then decide what I'm going to ship it. So it's just over a pound. So it's going to be two pounds. I'm probably going to be doing uh, priority, priority mail, USPS, because FedEx and UPS just don't compete on items, I would say, like two pounds and under. Uh, dog PTA. Yeah. I mean, he says, um, larger sizes are harder to find off the rack. Sometimes if you're meaning as the buyer, yes, it could be very true. Um, and so that's why they sell quicker on eBay on this guy. I'm going to go ahead and ship it out in a padded flat rate because this is a, like a wrinkle free blazer. It's not like a typical blazer. It's more like a casual blazer. I don't typically ship out blazers in padded flat rate envelopes, but I'm going to on this one um, just because of what it is. So that's why I'm doing this one. And it's going to save me like a buck. So
So we're going to do padded flat rate. Where did you go? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Man, where is it? Oh, because I put dimensions in there. Huh. All right, we're going to redo this. More for the padded flat rate option. Find it. Which is interesting. I'm missing it. There it is. I still got to figure out this Facebook order that for some reason it's not shipping it out. This blazer, I won't do padded flat rate just because it's a nicer blazer. The buyer, um, I charge ten bucks for shipping, so that should be that should suffice for the cost to ship this guy. This is a Brooks Brothers, and I got sixty three dollars for this. Let me see. Yeah, sixty three eighty six with shipping. Brooks Brothers wool sport coat or blazer, and I'll show you the uh, tag in here. So what you want to look for right there, Brooks Brothers. Explorer is a good option, but any anything Brooks Brothers with Blazer is going to do well. It's, it's just a well-known brand. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be about two pounds. I know some people, just to give you an option or two when you're folding Blazers, you can uh, fold it inside out, turn it inside out, and then fold it. I just fold it the way it is. Um, that mainly is to... If you want to fold it inside out, it's to like keep it from getting stained or anything. But what I'm going to do is put it in a poly mailer just to protect it, waterproof it, because I don't want this to get stained. And then I'll put this inside a box. And I want to see... I've got a couple options on shipping this out to save some money. It's under two pounds. So under two, but USPS doesn't care. They're gonna round up to two anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a couple box or the dimensions of this box and I'm gonna ship it in. Priority mail, where's this going? Texas, that's why. Okay, priority mail is 773. It's hardly ever that cheap on a two pound package. Um, and then I could look at regional rate as 780. So I'm going to keep it priority mail. This is a 1097 box. It's just a regular priority mail box. So not a flat rate, but it's more of a flat box for stuff like this. going. Got one more item to do. This next item, I don't really look forward to packaging up because it's a, 
It's a set of seven plates, but I did get good money for it. And I'll show you how I do that in just a second. All right, so last item for today. Sold these plates. You can see they're kind of faded. So I bought 14 of these. These the last, I already sold the first seven. They were in better condition. The brand is Williams Sonoma. Show you right there. Williams Sonoma is a great brand. It goes for really good money. It's expensive in the store if you buy this stuff new. So therefore, someone's getting a deal when they buy it used, not having to pay as much. But these, like I said, even had some like fading on the plate. Um, it has like a really cool design, but it's faded. Definitely listed that in the in the description and in the title um, to make sure that the person saw it. And I'm going to go ahead and weigh these beforehand. All seven plates come in at just under 15 pounds. So by the time I add in like a box and bubble wrap and packaging and things like that, it's going to be 16 pounds or less. And we're just going to look. The reason why I'm weighing it before is to know do I want to put this in USPS priority mail or do I want to do FedEx or UPS? If I do FedEx or UPS, I have to use my own box. If I do priority mail, I can use their box. So I really want to use their box if I can. Um, because, hey, it's free. I don't want to pay for I don't want to use mine if I don't have to. But likely the case, priority mail on stuff that weighs 16 pounds is expensive. It's $42.64 to send that USPS. FedEx home delivery is $18.44. And UPS ground is, uh, sorry, am I looking at that right? UPS ground is $18.44. And FedEx home delivery, both the same. <coughs> Excuse me. So. 1844. I'm going to go with UPS just because it's closer to my house. And now I need to get a box for this. <laughs> so I've got a few sizes of boxes for things like this. This is a 12 by 12 by 10. Those plates are 11 inch diameter, so this will fit those. Shelby, I'll get to your question as soon as you finish that. Um, Shelby's question is on if I ever get complaints on shipping, more specifically with eBay defaults to priority shipping, and sometimes when your package you can get ship uh, first class. I haven't had anyone complain about that. Um, most of the time, if someone reaches out, which it's hardly ever, hardly anyone reaches out once they've made the sale, they kind of just drop off as far as messaging goes. Um, unless it's late or something. But I have gotten a couple people who have reached out who have bought multiple items and said, hey, can I get a discount on shipping since I bought you know, two or three items from you? And most of the time I will ship the item, see what the price was, and then I'll just give them the difference back if they reach out and ask for it. So yeah, that's that's kind of, that's more likely the request that I'll get from from someone on shipping than what you were asking. So not really on that one. Got my 
of bubble wrap here behind. The stuff I bought isn't the normal stuff I usually buy, and it's kind of hard to tell where the line is. So I have to really look at it sometimes. So I have lined this box. Sorry, I don't know if you guys got lost on TikTok, but I've lined this box with a big bubble wrap. And now I'm gonna take the small bubble wrap and wrap each plate. Actually, I'm going to do multiple at one time. Basically kind of just weaving this through each layer and then take one more and I'll tape all this so it's really secure and make sure all the corners are wrapped. All right, so I've kind of taped this on the front and on the sides, and I'm just gonna go around the side real quick and tape all of this bubble wrap down. Just to make sure these plates stay secure. And that's pretty good. I'm actually, so I have like five inches of space left at the top and I don't want to have that much space because I don't want it bouncing around. So I'm gonna actually use a smaller box. I didn't think it was gonna fit in this, but turns out it probably will. So that was a 10 inch tall. This is a six inch tall. I think we should be fine here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Check this question that came in. Yeah, Teresa, this is just the way I do it. And um, I've shipped out quite a bit of plates. Um, and I will say I put a lot of fragile stickers. So I bought these for like 10 bucks and I'll put these all over the box. It's just one way I do it. And maybe I underdo it. I'm not sure. But I haven't had any really many broken plates, broken sets. Um, and I think if you keep, if you ship it FedEx or UPS, they take better care of their packages in transit than I think USPS does. So um, that's typically why obviously it's cheaper and uh, less likely I'll get a case. Yeah. And I forgot to mention that. So Shelby thinks that plate set was seven plates that I paid like 10 bucks for, for the set. I sold it for $78.86 total, including shipping. So $25 of that was shipping. I ended up getting 50 something bucks for it. So yeah, it was a good sale. And for that, I should profit around like 60. No, not that much. I should profit around 40 bucks for that set. And I don't know how much you guys spend on bubble wrap, but if you're looking for some cheap bubble wrap or at least the cheapest I can find, um, it's not a bad option. I've got it linked in this video. I've got it linked on TikTok. So all my supplies are there if you're looking for boxes or things like that. That's it. The majority of my supplies are there. Probably not every single item I use, but most of it's there. <laughs> All right, let's redo this, and I think it should fit in here. Yeah, we've got a little room to spare. I want to make sure that there's no room whatsoever, like no space. So I'm going to look for some um, in this closet. I've got supplies, so I'm going to look for like some filler stuff that I can put in so it doesn't bounce around. Plus size flipper, what's going on? Thanks for jumping in. What's up, Chris? Ship your own stuff, Chris. Guys, I would suggest, you know, if you're not shipping out China and stuff that is breakable, I guess we would call it. I, for the longest time, I didn't do it because I didn't want to ship it. And you can see this is obviously taking me longer to do than, say, those shirts. And normally it wouldn't take me this long, except I'm alive. Usually it would be a few minutes less than this. But um, you can make some really good money on dish sets if you know what to look for, certain brands. So don't be afraid to do this. Um, to look for this stuff because there is a lot of value out there in sets like this. All right, let's just make sure it's going to be under 16 pounds, and it is. All right, so now I'm going to update the dimensions and just make sure, see if the price has changed. Because the first box was a little bit bigger, I think, than color. Price didn't change. Still 1844. Let's print this out.
Has anyone had luck selling vintage wedding dresses? I never have, but if you're watching and you have sold vintage wedding dresses, let Shelby know on TikTok. And that one's ready to go. So that's all I got, guys. And I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon, unless you have any questions um, for me before I go. I went over an hour, but an hour 20, that's not bad. It's better than an hour 45 like I've been doing. All right, I don't see anything coming in. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut off. There it is, YouTube first. And TikTok.